Which title are you most mobile? No thanks. Uh, what mobile games even came out this year? Last year I was able to vote for Marvel Snap. Vampire Survivors, baby. Does it does it count if it's a mobile port of a game, or does it need to be a new thing? <sighs> I saw a Sega monitor back there. Did you? Just yeah, I did. I see. Dude, a I, was I, that a I, I, I saw. Shirt? I saw Gilius Thunderhead's helmet. Is it crazy? Is that about this trailer right yes, now? Yes, there's Sega stuff in it. Is it crazy? <laughs> How did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't seen any. I looked at the skateboard. Crazy tech. What's going on? Oh, it was crazy tech. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's a lot of Sega stuff. All the lights are out. I'm maxing the volume. This came out of nowhere. Did you save the game? Really? Of course I did. <laughs> Oh God! Here we go. Ah! Ah! Shinobi. Whoa. Okay, that's Jet Set Radio. <laughs> oh, it is. Wow. Oh my God. Streets of Rage. See, Sh I called it. I knew it wasn't just Whoa. going to be one thing. Dude, the oh, Shinobi. Oh, this looks this sick. Shinobi oh. is like hand drawn. Oh my god, you crazy taxi? They're rebooting they're, all of their IPs. Uh, they're just uh, making like everything they've ever done. That's crazy. They're, they're just making a bunch of all the. Uh, wow. I've never seen an announcement like this. This is not enough time to absorb this because even just a single one of those things guy. on the <laughs> list would merit. <laughs> Sega. <laughs> Sega. 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 That guy's me. All right, that was sick. I need to go back to this on YouTube. New Jet Set Radio, new Streets of Rage that's 3D, new Golden Axe, new Shinobi. Like, what? Thanks to Sega for that truly incredible announcement. All right, well, this next trailer might be Dragon Ball. Frieza and Cell in Fortnite. It's time for Tenkaichi 4. I'm, I'm still kind of speechless at how many things they just announced. If it were just one of those things, I would know what to talk about first. What's, what do I even search for this? Sega Game Awards? I don't know what I would search to find this. Okay, um... Power Surge! Sega Reveal Trailer. Okay. It's called Power Surge for some reason. Let me line this up better. Okay, so hopefully this will be better quality. We can pick apart the uh, little references better. Also, I really want to see the gameplay at better quality as well. Yeah, okay, so this is much better quality. Yep. Uh, that is Axel Stone's denim vest and gloves right there. I, I wonder, I need to go back and listen to what Nitrosonic said. I, he might have recognized the gloves. That's insane if you recognize the gloves right there. Yeah. But then again, I think it's kind of insane I recognize the helmet. <laughs> and my brother was in here like, what are you guys talking about? Thinking we're being like... Conspiracy theorists or something. I think that's a Streets of Rage shirt right there. Yeah. I actually have a Streets of Rage shirt. I would have worn my Shinobi shirt if I knew this was going to happen. I wore my Sonic shirt because I just wanted to wear something Sega because I was expecting Virtua Fighter 6. Uh... Yeah, obviously the Sonic rings. And you know what's funny about the Shinobi arcade cabinet back here? Oh, there's the crazy taxi license plate. I need to get the crazy taxi license plate like that and put it next to my Blade Runner license plate. Okay, look at this. I might be reading too far into it, but I think this is actually not only just an excuse to put Shinobi in the trailer, but I think it's actually a reference to the commercial for the PS2 Shinobi reboot. Did you save the game? Really? Of course I did. <laughs> left side. What about the left side? There is a DC logo on the skateboard? For real? Okay, I can go back and look. Okay, but you see the Shinobi arcade? Being the portal that segues them into this here. 
I don't know if you guys have seen it, but there's a commercial for the PS2 Shinobi reboot, just titled Shinobi. And in that commercial, it is somebody playing a Shinobi arcade game because it was a reboot, right? So they were wanting to they were wanting to kind of imply that, ah, oh, what's new is old again. It, Shinobi's making a comeback, even though now it's old. Uh, so somebody was playing a Shinobi arcade game, one of the old Shinobi games. And while he was playing it, these ninjas were fighting behind him and he didn't realize it. And he didn't recognize that something was going on behind him until a shuriken got thrown and got stuck in the arcade. And so then he saw the shuriken and pulled it out and looked behind himself. And it, I think he said Shinobi's back or something, because like I said, it was supposed to be a comeback for Shinobi. So I think that's why they might have done a Shinobi arcade cabinet specifically instead of any of the other games being the arcade cabinet. Uh, left side of the board of the skateboard. Is it in the first shot when he brings it in? Yo, yo. In the last shot. Okay. Before the power goes out. This is a really good trailer. It actually made me laugh for the joke in the middle. Which is saying a lot because I don't think any of the other jokes actually made me laugh from Game Awards. Was it that shot? How are you able to see it from here? There's no way. It has to be a different shot. Oh! You're right. Good catch. Also, I think these are sprays and stuff from uh, Jet Set Radio, right? You thought DC Comics? <laughs> Did you say the game? Really? Obviously, DC is Dreamcast. Why would you think of anything else? Haha. -ha. Of course I did. Also, side note, I got a little Dreamcast ornament. You know how Hallmark makes a ton of random ornaments? I got a little Dreamcast ornament that plays sound from Sonic Adventure. I can go get it and show you guys if you want. You need to get it. Yeah, you've seen it. I got the SNES as well. Okay, so Jet Set Radio got leaked before because apparently, so the leak comes apparently from a survey. A survey was going out to a focus group, and in the survey, there were multiple different screenshots of Jet Set Radio, each one with a slightly different art style, and they were asking people which art style they preferred. And one of the people that got their hands on that leaked the screenshot. So I don't know if you guys have seen it. But I'm glad they ended up going with this art style because out of the art styles presented in that survey, this was my favorite as well. So I'm glad that other people seem to be of the same opinion. Yeah, I was thinking about buying a Dreamcast, uh, unironically. Yeah, look. This looks so clean. The art style is amazing. Like, this is the perfect art style for Jet Set Radio, right? And... If you told me that Sega was going to make a whole bunch of reboots of their old games all at the same time, I would assume that they would all be kind of like low-budget double-A games with the same art style across the board. But look, Jet Set Radio looks like this and looks amazing, and Streets of Rage is being made into a 3D game, and it's a different art style. Look, Streets of Rage, 3D. It's not a normal beat-em-up. It's a 3D beat-em-up, which I was saying I was a huge fan of earlier because I love Streets of Rage 4, but I feel as if beat-em-ups are kind of held back because there's sort of this weird nostalgic aura around beat-em-ups that kind of prevents beat-em-ups from ever evolving past uh, how they were played back when they were originally conceived, right? Uh, so I'm glad that they're actually willing to make it a 3D game and not just bank on nostalgia like Streets of Rage 4 does. Uh, Look, he goes into a mount. And look, this this is the part that made me speechless. Shinobi? And it's hand-drawn. Look how well Shinobi is. So, immediately, you see Jet Set Radio with its art style, and then a 3D Streets of Rage with a different art style, and then a Shinobi game with its own art style that is not cheap, 
A lot of people just assume 2D graphics equals cheap, right? Because for some reason, people have been thinking that since games turned 3D. But that Shinobi art style is hand-drawn like Rayman Origins or Rayman Legends, right? That's not something you can just pump out. Look, look how many frames of animation he has. Look, he's in the air. Look at that. The smear frames, the impact frame, the screen shake. That looks as if it feels really nice. I'm so excited for Shinobi. Uh... I was saying earlier, I don't think I've ever brought this up on the channel before, but I'm actually a huge Shinobi fan. Before I made the Tanuki Tail channel, which I've since changed to Tanuki Tussle and Tanuki Type, respectively, but before I started the whole Tanuki brand YouTube channel, my username on everything was Kunai Guy because I loved Shinobi so much, and I was really into knives at the time, uh, knives in real life. So I really liked knives in real life, and I really liked Shinobi. And you obviously throw Kunai in Shinobi, so I named myself Kunai Guy. And I don't think I've brought that up before. Uh, look how great this looks. I'm so glad that they're keeping the spectacle and the set pieces of Shinobi. Because honestly, Shinobi 3 is one of the best games ever made. And it has some amazing set pieces, right? And this looks as if it's one of those stages in which you're uh, riding something similar to the, uh, the horse riding stage. This is not just some throwaway, double-A project to just cash in on some nostalgia, right? This is not just a cash grab. So I think I'm going to uh, go pretty ham on speedrunning this game. I think this will be a really awesome speedrun game. And then, just like how Streets of Rage got a 3D treatment, Golden Axe. Look at this. A 3D Golden Axe. I don't even know what character this is. Oh, I didn't recognize the guy with the sword behind her last time. So we have uh, Gilius Thunderhead being presented mostly here. Uh, which I think is good because I always thought it was so weird that Gilius was kind of not the main character in a game called Golden Axe. When he's the Axe character. Because uh, the sword guy would usually get put in the center of the box art most of the time, right? The sword guy. Uh, I don't know who this is, though. Does anybody know which girl this is? She's holding a glaive. With a blade on each end. It's not Tyrus Flair or whatever her name is. But the axe has to be golden. Um, well, it got half of it right, at least. If you get a guy with a sword, none of it's right. <laughs> Maybe it's more about uh, it being golden as a metaphor. It's a golden aura. <laughs> it looks as if... This is probably a cutscene, right? But maybe there's a dodge roll of some kind. Look at the mount. That looks awesome. And look, cr uh, Crazy Taxi is no joke one of my top five favorite games ever, and it's my favorite arcade game of all time. I think Crazy Taxi is one of the few examples of a perfectly designed game, and everything about it somehow works despite it being so jank. It's such a unique type of jankery because it feels so jank with all the car physics, but it somehow stays together at all times. Despite it being super janky, it never falls apart, which is what sets that game apart from other janky physics-based games, right? And the more you play the game, the more you can appreciate the actual level design behind uh, where they place everything in the city and where they place different customers. And it's an RNG-based game because the customers have levels of RNG to them, but despite the customers being RNG, the more you play it, you start to realize... The RNG does not affect people's score at all, because even with the RNG elements, getting a high score is going to entirely come down to skill. So I could literally make a whole video talking about how perfectly designed Crazy Taxi is. Look at this. This is how it opens. With the police truck. See, this is, this is obviously gameplay of a police car chasing the two taxis here, so there might be some kind of asymmetrical multiplayer. And I was saying before that uh, I think it would be really cool if a game as niche as Crazy Taxi were able to kind of find more success by pulling in some of the Grand Theft Auto crowd. Imagine if a game as niche as Crazy Taxi were able to find some success in the audience of something so mainstream as Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, San Fran. Yeah, the park area when they went over the hills. That looked like the park area. Right here. I'm expecting it to be an entirely new map, but there are probably going to be places that are reminiscent. Like, this residential area is new. Keep in mind, I've only played Crazy Taxi once, so I don't know uh, if some of these are referencing the 
the sequels. I've never felt the need to play the sequels because Crazy Taxi 1 can keep me entertained for all eternity. And I've never really been able to get my hands on the sequels. Uh, I think my biggest question is how does the driving feel? Because the, the mechanics and the physics and the overall game feel of Crazy Taxi 1 is what makes it so special. And if they deviate too far from that, it'll be really risky, right? Because if you just make a generic car driving game with generic drift mechanics, it's not going to be as cool as the original. Yeah, there is a small residential area in the original, but it didn't look that uh, suburban, did it? Was anything already announced? Um, not technically, but there was a Jurassic Park game announced that looked like the Dino Crisis game that people have been wanting. It looks as if there's a Jurassic Park game swooping in uh, to save people from Exo Primal. It's behind you when you start. Yeah. This car looks insane. I, I wonder why they're having green flames. I don't know if that's a new mechanic or if it's just a visual effect, right? See, but look, this is obviously multiple taxis getting chased by the uh, police car there. Yeah, and they say and more, so it's not even limited to the things they just said here. I would be willing to bet and more includes Space Channel 5 and Comics Zone because Sega has already said that they are making a... Well, not Sega themselves, but Sega has already confirmed a Space Channel 5 and Comics Zone movie. Shinmu remake? Maybe that would have to be the last thing. <laughs> All of these would have to lead into Shinmu. I don't need a Shinmu remake. Just let the guy make his 14 Shinmu games so he can finish the story. Don't do anything to slow down the ending. See, look, there's Axel in his uh, original car there. I don't... So his license plate says no miss, uh, but I know Axel's license plate says that because I see Axel right here. And uh, earlier, it looks as if it's Gina driving a car. It, the license plate says sexy sis. And I don't know if that's what Gina's license plate normally says because I always play BD Joe. So I wouldn't know. I don't see BD Joe anywhere in this trailer. But uh, Gus is typically considered the best character. And there's a case to be made for BD Joe uh, being comparable to Gus. But typically, Gus is considered the best. And then BD Joe is almost as good as Gus. Uh,. Which is one of the reasons I play him, because I think it's kind of cool playing not the best character, but a character that can sort of have a case for being the best. But also, uh, BD Joe's car is the fastest, which that doesn't matter much because there's a limit break that you can make it where there's no cap to your speed in the game. But when you're accelerating, it helps uh, at certain levels of acceleration. Uh, BD Joe's being the fastest uh, helps a little bit. So BD Joe is the fastest and... He's sort of like the cool hipster pick if you want to play the best character. And also, he has the swaggy bucket hat. Shinmu Zero, no. Shinmu Zero, you could play as his dad, who founded the uh, Hazama Martial Arts School, right? Learning regular Baji Kwan. And then he makes his own school. Uh, so out of these, I'm definitely the most excited for Shinobi and Crazy Taxi. But I'm going to play every one of these. And again... I probably would have had a crazier reaction for Jet Set Radio if it weren't leaked. But, uh... I probably don't even seem that ecstatic in the initial live reaction because it was just so much to process all at once. Dang, look at that uh, Grand Upper. Is it Grand Upper or Ground Upper? I never know. Jet Set and Crazy Taxi, your top two. Dude, if there's multiplayer and Crazy Taxi, we have to play it together. Uh, if it ends up being fun, then I legitimately might consider making a separate channel just for crazy taxi high scores and look at that shot in golden axe uh so sega actually did they didn't make a 3d golden axe but in the 2000s they outsourced a golden axe game to some western studio and it ended up being a disaster uh i think matt mcmuscles might have a video uh sort of a documentary uh talking about it if you guys kind of want to see what i'm referring to uh, so after that, I just thought Sega never wanted to touch Golden Axe again because, you know, Japanese companies are kind of weirdly superstitious sometimes. They have one bad game and they assume that there's a stink on the whole IP and they can never return to it again. 
Uh, and I thought if they were going to return to Golden Axe, it would be more similar to Streets of Rage 4, a much more traditional beat em up. But the fact that they are willing to go all in and make it just a 3D game with a with a cool art style, it's kind of chunky. It's sort of semi realistic, but the proportions are kind of chunky as if it's a comic book, you know, like Conan. I think this is literally the best case scenario for what they could have done with Golden Axe. Hey, look, Gilius is holding a sword here, so he's not just limited to the axe. Uh, so maybe you could pick up the axe regardless of who you're playing. Maybe that was Tyrus Flair earlier then, and Tyrus Flair just picked up the uh, pole arm. Uh, apparently the PS5 Pro is coming out next year. So if a PS5 Pro does come out, then I'm going to get it because that's why I've been waiting this long on a PS5. That's why I just bought a Series S to hold me over. So I could at least play next-gen exclusive uh, demos and stuff. Because the Series S is saving me so much time when I play Street Fighter because the loading times for Street Fighter 6 on PS4 are so long. Look at that. I'm beat and you're watching the Disney Channel. 